I'm tired of these mother snakes on my mother switch. Snake Pass is a game I've had my eye on for quite a while now. It definitely looked like a game that I would enjoy and I had high hopes for it. And now Snake Pass has released on the Xbox One, PS4, Steam, and of course the Nintendo Switch. And since I am a new Switch owner, like a lot of us are, I wanted to pick it up on the Switch because I wanted to see how the game performed and what the game was all about. So Snake Pass, it looks like an interesting game, but how is it? Is it any good? Is it worth checking out? Let's find out in this review of Snake Pass. So Snake Pass has you playing as a snake named Noodles, and basically you're going throughout levels collecting keystones. You get the keystones, you go to the gate, and you proceed to the next level. Now this definitely looks like a collectathon N64 game, and when you first boot it up, you're like, wow, this looks like an HD N64 game, and that's not a bad thing. That's actually one of the things that resonated with me when it came to this game. I definitely got sort of a Banjo-Kazooie or Donkey Kong 64 vibe from the game, and that's something that's prevalent throughout, you know? especially with the music. The music is done by David Wise, who I believe worked on Donkey Kong 64 soundtrack. So everything feels very familiar in terms of the presentation and whatnot. It definitely is like, hey, this is like an N64 game. I remembered when I was 12 and everything looked great on my huge 55 inch CRT TV. What's interesting is Snake Pass is the first game on the Nintendo Switch to run on the Unreal 4 engine, which is a pretty powerful engine. And I was very interested to see the performance of how it you know, stacks up against Against the PS4, the Xbox One, and the Steam version because we know that the Nintendo Switch is underpowered when it comes to those three other platforms. And surprisingly, the Nintendo Switch version looks pretty damn good. When you, I've looked at some comparison videos of you know the game running on the PS4, the Xbox One, Steam, and the Switch, and for the most part, it's pretty negligible. There is a frame rate increase if you play it on the PS4 Pro or the, or the Steam and your computer is capable of running that, but for the most part, when you look at the base PS4 model, the Xbox One, and the Nintendo Switch, it looks pretty similar. The differences are very negligible, and in some cases, I think the Switch which version looks even better. So I was very pleased to see that. It shows that Sumo Pass really knew sort of what they were doing with the Switch, especially when you consider the fact that this game was ported to the Nintendo Switch in just three weeks. So very interesting. And I really like the aesthetics. I really like the music. There's 15 levels across four different worlds. And these four different worlds all have their own style. They all have their own feel to them. So the game never really gets boring in terms of visuals and whatnot. And overall, it's a very pleasing package on the eyes and the ears. I really enjoyed what I saw and what I heard from Snake Pass. Now, of course, none of that matters if the gameplay isn't any good because gameplay is king. And when I first started playing Snake Pass, it was a bit jarring, I guess would be the word, because I've never played a game like it. And in 2017, if you say you've never played a game like another game, that should instantly get your attention because video games have been out for so long. It's almost like we've seen everything that can possibly be done. But Sumo Pass was like, no, you, there's still a couple more tricks up our sleeves. You know, we could still bring some fresh gameplay to the table. And Snake Pass gameplay is definitely fresh. So Snake Pass has you controlling Noodle and you're going throughout these levels, trying to collect the keystones, trying to collect um, little water droplets, I suppose they are, and trying to collect coins. But the way you control Noodle is very interesting. You don't just hold up on the analog stick and he slithers around. No, 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 no. You actually have to think like a snake. And I'm not a huge fan of snakes in real life, but I understand how they move. I understand, you know, they slither, you know, you go left to right. And much like in real life, Noodles has to go left to right. So you hold down the R trigger on the Nintendo Switch to say that you want to propel movement, and then you hold left and right, and you slither around the levels. And at first it was very, you know, jarring. It was very different, and I didn't know 
you know, I didn't know how well I would adjust to it, but it's done in such a great manner that after a level or two, you know, you are totally involved in noodles. You are totally involved in how this game performs and how this game controls. And it really has a great sense of control once you master it. You also hold A to have Noodles move his head up. And when you move your head up, you can you know get up on ledges or start to crawl and slither onto obstacles. And I would say, you know, once again, that's another thing that's pretty jarring. When you first start slithering up, you know, ladders and vines and whatnot, it's definitely sort of different. But once you get the feel of it, it feels amazing. It feels very fresh and it feels very innovative. And that's pretty impressive considering, like I said, we're in 2017 and most of the gameplay styles that are out there, we've done them all. But Snake Pass definitely sort of ups the ante with that and shows that there's still original and creative ideas out there. Now, like I said, you're collecting, the main thing you're collecting in the thing is keystones. When you get the keystones, you can access the gate and you move on to the next level. But there are other things to collect within the levels. And there's lots of little trinkets and secrets. And as the levels get more deeper into the game, the levels get more advanced and you have to hit switches and solve puzzles. And that's where the game really shines. The first few levels are pretty much your tutorial to get used to how the game feels and get used to how the game works. And then once you start getting deeper, things get a lot better in my opinion. Things get really fun and you're constantly racking your brain like, okay, well I see this keystone, how do I get up and get it? I see this coin over there, how in the hell do I get it without falling to my death? And that's where the game really shines in the puzzle platform forming aspect. Now, I would say that one of the knocks against the game definitely is the learning curve because like I said, it's very unique and it's very different. And I could see some younger players maybe being off put by this, but if you're willing to stick with it for a couple levels, it's totally worth it. Um, it's definitely something that rewards you for learning the control mastery of the game. And the game lasts for a long while too. You get about mm, 10 hours or so, give or take. And for $20, I think that's more than acceptable because you know you could play a, a $60 AAA game that has like a four hour main story and then, oh, you're just supposed to play online. So 10 hours, 20 bucks, a very good value in my opinion. Now the biggest problem with Snake Pass on the Nintendo Switch is unfortunately when you're not playing the game docked. In handheld mode, it was almost like I was playing the game drunk. It looked very fuzzy. It didn't look nearly as crisp as it did on the television screen. And I was pretty confused by this. I have tweeted Sumo Pass to see if they are planning an update to sort of fix this. And I have not heard anything back, but I have heard rumors that they are working to fix this. But as a handheld only experience, it is not nearly as good just because everything just sort of downgrades in terms of graphics. It doesn't look as vibrant. It doesn't look as crisp, but on your television, it looks amazing. So if this is a game that you plan on playing a lot at home, it's definitely worth checking out. If you're planning on playing it only in handheld mode, I would say it's a bit distracting. I definitely get more enjoyment from the game when playing it docked than I do in handheld mode. So with all these things said, is Snake Pass a game that you should enter your collection and have, you know, as a part of your gaming family? Let's find out in the recap. So like I said, Snake Pass is about 8 to 10 hours and it comes in at $20. And I think that's a good value for the game. It's a game that really is fun, it's innovative, it's fresh, it's unique. And no matter what platform you pick it up on, I think Snake Pass is definitely worth picking up. If you're a fan of puzzle platformer games, if you're a fan of N64 rare sort of titles, or collectathons in general, Snake Pass will give you a good value for your dollar. It's a great game to look at, it's a great game to play. Uh, the learning curve is definitely a bit steep, but it's just because it's so innovative. We've never seen anything like this. There's never been a game that controls like this. So I'm not really gonna hold that too much against the game. The only flaw that I see with the Nintendo Switch version would definitely have to be the off TV mode. If this is a game that you plan on using just as a handheld, you might wanna wait to see if they release a patch for it. But if you plan on playing in dock mode on your television, it looks gorgeous. The colors are crisp and vibrant and the world of Snake Pass is just great. I'm very interested to see what Sumo Pass does in the future and what the future of Noodles 
sequels holds because it's definitely a game that should have, you know, a sequel. It's definitely a game that should be expanded upon. So if you've picked up Snake Pass, let me know in the comments section down below. Let me know what you think of Snake Pass in general from this review, if you plan on picking it up or if it's something you're going to pass on. And of course, thank you for watching this video. If you are new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Check out other videos on the channel. I've got other Switch reviews such as Blaster Master and Super Bomberman, and of course, a Nintendo Switch console review. And if you really like my face and you really like what I do, check out my Patreon page and help me out. All right, I'll catch you guys next time. I'm going to play some more Snake Pass. Later.